Okie dokie. Mic check, mic check. Can you guys hear me okay? Let me get some levels. Oh! All right, sounding good. Welcome to my yard, everybody. It's the name of our new podcast. I always thought it would be kind of cool to do a little podcast just like here around the fire pit. Except for I just don't have anything interesting to say. You have anything interesting to say? No. I don't think people listen to our podcast. They're just sucking crap to one another constantly. <laughs> now, I'm not a huge fan of making videos about rumors, but once in a while, a few cameras will come out that I just get super excited about. And this is one of them. And it's from Canon. The very last Last time I made a rumor video was about the Canon R5, which was super exciting and kind of a disappointment. But it, you know, it kind of makes sense because Canon has always clarified that their mirrorless and DSLRs are photography first. They're photography cameras that happen to be able to shoot 8K video for a very short amount of time. But their cinema lineup is video first. And then I don't even know if it can take a picture. I don't know, that camera right there, the C300 Mark III. How much do we love this camera? Dude, I love it a lot. It's great, right? It's like, awesome. This is just, we're just in the shade right now, and this looks pretty decent, right? All right, let me ask you something. If you can have any camera you want, but it was the camera that you had to use for the rest of your life, what camera would you get? So you're talking about, I have to use this for everything. For everything. What would you use? It's probably this guy right here, the C300 Mark C300 III. Mark III? Yeah? yeah. I, I might have to agree with you. Maybe that or the C500 Mark II. You just have to have different lenses depending on which body you have. And I love it because it sits kind of right in the middle ground. You know, it's powerful enough to shoot a uh, feature film with, but at the same time, it's convenient and portable enough to just shoot these dumb little YouTube videos. All the stuff that we're about to talk about, I have no insider information about. I'm just gonna read off the internet that is already public. Cause here's the thing, I can talk about stuff as long as I don't know about it. I didn't sign any agreements to keep my mouth shut or anything like that. It's just like, it's I'm just reading a website, right? Canon confirms September 24th, 2020 announcement for the Canon Cinema EOS C70. Why is that so exciting? We love the C300 Mark III, we love the C500 Mark II, and we have also a C100 Mark II. So it seems like their naming system for Canon Cinema EOS is, you know, 100, 300, and 500. It gets bigger and better and better. But the C70, that's kind of like a smaller version of the C100. Canon today announces it reveals new details on a new cinema camera. Look at that. Oh, what? See that? Dang, that looks like if this one took a poop. I mean, it looks bigger than like a Canon R5, but definitely a lot smaller than that C300. So this is something that they're saying around September 24th. That's like next week, right? I got really excited because I would love some of the capabilities out of the C300, which is an amazing camera, but it really is overkill for YouTube stuff, right? We deal with it because I love the picture that comes out of it and the workflow is just so great. It's designed clearly for video first. So big deal with this is that it looks a little bit bigger than the R5, but see that ND filter right there. And then we have white balance, custom white balance right there. And then on the bottom we have HDMI that looks pretty big. So I'm gonna assume that's a full size HDMI. I wonder if it's gonna have SDI, but we have a mic input and it looks like two XLR inputs. And it doesn't look like it's big enough to be a full size XLR. Maybe they're doing what Blackmagic did and went mini XLR. I also wanna know what power consumption is like too, because this is the BPA60, which is a pretty fat battery. You can see how much it extends out the back there, but it does go through it pretty quick. If you use the BPA30, which is the one that's, oh, I wanna say about half the size of it, it does not last long at all. We'll usually slap on a BPA30, the smaller one for when we're flying this thing on a gimbal. But again, it just doesn't last very long. But this might be along the lines of the perfect do everything camera. And hopefully at a fair price because now I want it. I want to know what kind of display they're putting back there, but I'm gonna guess they're kind of going the C100 route where it's a flip out screen. Like the C300 Mark III, what makes it a little bit much and bulky is that you have to have the monitor attached to the top handle and ends up being this big old thing. But this one, clearly it looks like you just grab it the same way you would hold an R5, but it just got that extended side. And then you have some air vents back there. So of course it's not gonna overheat. I mean, Canon, their cinema lineup has been super, super solid with video. You don't have to worry about overheating or anything like that. So Canon, when it comes to cinema cameras, they are bulletproof. And again, I wanna say the reason why the R5, there is just so much issues with it is because it's not, designed for video. And then back here, we have waveform monitor down here, and then there's Zebra. What is these above it? What's above waveform monitor on that camera? It's waveform, then Zebra, then peaking, and then magnify. 
Oh, wait, it might be... Does that say focus? I can't really read it. That picture just isn't clear enough. But I don't know. It, it kind of seems like it could be the perfect camera that does everything. Small enough to vlog with, it'd be on the big side, but then it could also do professional stuff, right? Because right now, if I'm vlogging, I want a nice compact mirrorless camera. But if it came down to shooting on a bigger project right now, I'd probably use the Alexa Mini LF. What I love about the C300 is that it's just the middle ground, but it definitely still leans closer to the professional side than it does the consumer side. This C70 looks like it could be right there in the middle. The big question though is what are they gonna price this thing at and what is its capabilities? I think for just the body, it's gonna be close to, I wanna say 6,000. You think $6,000 for the, the body? Yeah. Yeah, cause the R5 is what, 35, 3,800, something like that. You think it's gonna be able to take RF lenses? That looks like one of the RF lenses. There hasn't been a camera that uses RF lenses and has built in NDs. I think they made it work, I mean, Man, this doesn't have RF lenses. Oh, snap. Wasn't it kind of disappointing when the, you know, the C500 and the C300 didn't have RF mounts? Yeah, very disappointing. It's like, why are you spending all this money for the lenses then? Which makes it tricky is like, if you were in the Canon system right now, you would get EF lenses for the cinema cameras and then RF lenses for the photography, at least to get the best of the best. There were some rumors saying that this is gonna have uh, the same sensor as the C300 Mark III, or at least very similar, but it would have dual gain output. So it's gonna be a Super 35 camera. So that's probably a hiccup for some people, but at the same time, if you come from like a cinema background, I mean, you're used to the Super 35. You're used to shooting, you know, on the Alexa Super 35. You're shooting on Reds, uh, unless it's the Monster Super 35, right? What's great about an RF is that you can easily adapt to EF, but you can just as easily adapt to PL and a bunch of other lenses. And you would just use adapters. Like this C300 Mark III can also adapt to PL, but you have to take off the bracket and everything. It's a bigger process. But that is probably the camera that I am most excited about. Okay, the specs are not known yet, but first RF mount cinema camera as a way for Canon to test the market. Now we're talking. But there is a competitor, of course, from Sony. Check that out. FX6, so little brother of the FX9. From what I can tell right now, it does look like it has the same variable ND filters that the FX9 has, which is awesome. I love that thing, right? Of course, we have dials for our audio, so we should be able to expect, you know, two XLR inputs, maybe mini XLR, if they are really trying to get down on size. So that is kind of tempting. Now, it looks like they did mount the monitor up top on the grip right there, so it is gonna expand the size, but it looks like you can easily strip it down. And I like that those look like thumb screws that are holding together that grip right there. That would be a quick detach, which I like because on the FX9, to take off that top handle, you need some tools. Look at that. Okay, so here's the Venice FX9 and FX6. Look how much shorter that is. Now it still looks a lot bigger than the C70. Like I'm gonna guess that this is probably closer in size to the C300 Mark III. Yeah. Okay, people are saying it will most likely be full frame and borrow from the FX9 sensor, color, science video format and its autofocus system. It's probably not going to be as powerful as the FX9, but man, 10-bit 422 raw output at 4K. Oh man, this this is going to be sweet. And again, I know nothing about these cameras, which is, might be a good thing because then I wouldn't be able to make these videos if I knew about it. Oh, also the after tomorrow, a GoPro is supposed to be announced. We probably won't be able to upload this video till tomorrow. So tomorrow after we post this video, a new GoPro is going to come out. And I'm actually very excited for that. I feel like that could be the king of action cameras, which you've been kind of bit by the GoPro Hero 8, right? Because you got it hoping for all those accessories and they just never come out with it or what? Nothing. Yeah, and they still haven't come out with anything. <laughs> Time to sell that because look at this. It looks like the Hero 9 is going to have more resolution. And this is what they've already officially announced so far. And it seems like according to rumors, it's going to have a front facing display. Look at this right here. What? Okay, I definitely need to get it now. Yeah. I mean, it looks awesome, but I am noticing that the lens cover is fused onto the GoPro. It doesn't give you that option to take it off anymore. That is definitely one thing that does bum me out about the Hero 8 is, you know, you can't replace that lens anymore because, you know, if it's an action camera, it's probably going to get scraped up. But it does seem like they do have vloggers in mind. Honestly, I think people thought that the Hero 8 was going to be this camera and everyone was really excited about it and it didn't really deliver. You know, the Osmo Action has that little screen up front. But this looks 
looks like a bigger screen than what's on the Osmo Action. And GoPros, man, I mean, they're still kind of the king of action cam. Oh, for sure. I don't know the accuracy of this box, but it looks like we got 5K 30, 4K 60, 33 feet underwater, 20 megapixel camera, hyper smooth 3.0, eight times slow-mo. So I'm assuming they're saying that your base timeline would be 30 frames per second. So 240 frames per second. And I'm excited though. I'm definitely much more excited about the Hero 9 than I was about the Hero 8 for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry you bought one. I mean, me personally, I think the biggest advantage GoPro has over anybody is that it has a really good wide field of view that's stabilized. What I like about Insta360 is that it's modular, right? You have your action camera, but then you can also turn it into a 360 camera and you can also put a one in sensor. That's cool. And then DJI has the Osmo Action, which has that self facing screen. But when it comes to just an action camera like you can't beat gopro like they're still the best the stabilization is good they're rugged and they have an ultra wide field of view so especially if you're gonna be using it for something like a helmet camera or something like that you want that super view right and as far as i know gopro is still the best in the business when it comes to that kind of action camera well for sure the gopro 9 because i was really disappointed with the gopro 8 i i just kind of i haven't even used it that much to be honest and i'm also really excited with the C70 because you know the RP is cool and it's good for all like my YouTube stuff but when I do some work with our clients I, I kind of don't want to take the RP I want to take something a little bit more powerful and the C70 looks like it's gonna be that camera I mean for me like the a7s3 is very very close to being the perfect camera but I just wish it had built-in NDs. It's so convenient. Once you have it, it's hard to go back. It's worth lugging this thing around because of those built-in NDs, I think. Should we read some comments? My last video was about how to set up a little tiny Cinewhoop. What is a Cinewhoop? I think you should show them. <laughs> Any excuse to fly one, I'll take it. So it's a little bit dark. Usually it looks better when the lighting's good, but uh, let's go for a flight anyways. Sam's taking over the comments. Arnar Sigal, I'm sorry I totally butchered your name, says, I swear to God, if this guy ever made a walkthrough of a car, I will watch it. Oh, Oh wait, I already did. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the 50 minute Tesla video we did. Neela Raj says, Robert is so simple. He is in a position where people have personal assistance and stuff, but look at this guy. I love this dude. Dude, Robert's great, isn't he? He's yeah. so humble, he's so chill. He's one of my favorite people of all time. Yeah, man, he's super funny. He promised us a surfing lesson, so. Oh my God, wouldn't that be cool, getting yeah. surfing lessons from Robert McIntosh? Yeah. He's a pretty good teacher because he taught me how to fly this thing. Well, not so well. Uh -huh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Never mind, I'm sorry. Ayush Renith says, the headset makes him look like Black Noir from The Boys. This headset's pretty gnarly looking, huh? I think it looks pretty cool, but Carrie says I look like a bug. Here, watch yourself. I'm coming between you and you're like, oh! Is it scary when I come right over your head because you feel all that wind? Just, ooh. Well, not only that, but Robert said to be careful with this thing because if it hits you, it's probably going to give you stitches. I freak myself out with this thing. This thing's pretty hardcore, huh? It's small, but when it buzzes past you, it's like, woo. It's like a mini hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I hear. All right. I think that's it for this episode. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys on the next one, whenever Bye. that may be. Bye. What was that? Do you want me to leave? Yeah.